Aloha everybody, Gabe here from the Hawaii Institute of Self-Reliance, His Survival. Welcome back, mahalo for watching. In today's video, I have a first impressions of the Bark River Tracker. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Stay tuned to see if this knife is the beast of the jungle. stats of this knife it's a little over 13 inches overall length I think it's 13.1 something like that and then it's got a seven and a half inch blade and this is a hollow grind this section right here and this is a convex grind right here awesome belly the thickness right is super thick this is 0.265 inches it's just ridiculously thick beast of a knife jungle beast convex edge 90 degree spine strong tip right there for prying and this model is an a2 steel got some jimping right here full tang of course and this model the handle is uh, is Markita, uh, green Markita. It's got a lanyard hole right there, stainless steel pins. But it's really interesting the the hollow grind and then the convex grind. That's that's I kind of dig that. It's it's interesting. Okay, some people are going to ask: Is this a survival knife or a one tool option? Well, I definitely think it's a survival knife. Full tan construction, tough steel. It works. It's got a long enough blade. I like my survival knives to be at least a five inch blade or dedicated survival knives should be at least a five inch blade in my opinion. And definitely full tang and of a tough steel. Now this is an A2 so that's pretty tough and it's made by Bark River so it's a tough tool here. I don't necessarily believe in the one tool option I prefer a three blade system or a four blade system or you could consider it like a, a three tool system a machete a belt knife and a multi-tool when I go camping that's usually what I would bring even if it's just car camping um, backpacking definitely I would bring a three blade maybe even four blade uh, system that I prefer Survival knife. Yes, I don't believe in the one tool option. So take that um, as you will. I will say, I will add that if I had this knife in a dire straits scenario and it was my only knife, I would be counting my blessings. Because this is big enough to do larger tasks and it has this nice hollow ground right there where you can put your finger um, right there and do you know a fair good job at small tasks it's of course got this really thick 
um, or wide blade I should say um, even right here so you're not going to be doing all these detailed carving with it but you can get all the basic camp uh, small tasks pretty much with this one knife now let's go to the chopping because I think that the front grind should be raised just a little bit because it's so thick so I'm gonna do some chopping demonstration here this is some guava and it'll easily handle this kind of stuff no problem right no problem I can make some quick kindling out of a dry piece of wood and it works it works good for the small uh, size limb right but I believe if it had just a little bit higher front grind see now this is some ironwood so it doesn't necessarily sink in as well as I'd like and it almost kind of bounces off that's not a big deal because I'm not going to be chopping something this thick or this hard with a knife like this uh, to make your basic shelter I think you're gonna maybe take down uh, pieces of lumber maybe around two to three inch diameter and really not much more because you're just wasting your energy right so that hollow grind you know that sinks in there real nice but I believe this front grind because it's so thick should be raised now I want to do some finer tasks so you can get right up there like that and it's really comfortable see finer tasks easy also you could do notches so I'll just do a quick notch right here So, finer tasks, no problem. Look at that, easy. Easy peasy, done. So, yeah, you can do finer tasks, for sure. Again, I just wish the grind was raised just a little bit. But you can have Bark River do that um, before you buy it, or you can send yours in to improve it. Now this tip is pretty awesome too, strong, I mean, look at that it just pierces real nice you know it's just got a strong tip real nice my question is are you gonna wear this on your belt I don't think so it's 22 ounces so yeah it, it's gonna go in my pack uh, I have worn it scout style and it does work it's just kind of bulky to be honest but the sheath is top quality uh, right now, I don't have the the dangler set up, but there's a dangler on that, and I'll, I'll show you that later. Um, uh, when I get home, I'll, I'll add that back on there and, and show it on the video. And I'm just out hiking right now by the beach, and you can carry it, like I said, the dangler's missing. You can carry it, and it's an awesome dangler. And then you can carry it scout style like this, right? And it does hold the knife in there really well. The top quality stitching, it's an awesome sheet. I've used the sheet a little, it got kind of messed up. Uh, it got wet in the jungle, of course. I'm not a huge leather sheet fan. I'm in the jungle or by the beach. I like Kydex, but I'm not gonna replace the sheet. This is awesome right here. I just want more wear to be shown on it. <laughs> it's awesome. Nice stitching right there, solid button snap and I really like that that it gets out of the way of the knife you see that so you don't cut it right because you see it's 
not going to cut the strap. And if you try to like take it out like that, but all you have to do is go like that. And it slides. So that's awesome. Easy deployment in and out. Holds the knife in there. Secure. That's not going anywhere. Solid sheath. Leather. Made in America. Awesomeness right here. Here's a closer look at the sheath. This is a set up in a baldric style. I just paracord wrapped uh, some loops around there a couple times so it doesn't slide back and forth. Hooked up a beach and tactical sling and this works great as a baldric setup. This is how I would carry my tracker. Now this piece goes right here for a dangler if you were to put it on your belt and it works great and these are also uh, removable you can take these off so there you go closer look at the sheath uh, I would definitely suggest a baldric sling style carry and just take off the dangler and there you go, you're fine. Comfortable, doesn't twist, doesn't slide around, works perfect. I want to talk about the handle. That was one of my major concerns, is these creating hot spots. But what I found is no, they don't. They don't create hot spots. And I've got medium to large size gloves, so there's definitely quite a few different positions you can hold this knife in. Get right up there on that blade. You see that? So I like the handle. It's super thick. These huge liners. You see that huge liner? That's awesome. So yeah, I think this is an awesome handle. Get that snap cut going. Wow. Yeah, I enjoy this handle. I'm not a huge fan of the scallops right here, the little grooves right here on other knives. But tell you the truth, this is the first knife that I can honestly say they don't create hot spots. It actually fits. It actually fits my hand. Genius. Genius. Okay, there is some controversy behind this knife. The WSK, Wilderness Survival Knife. Uh, I guess it was designed back in the 90s and was made by David Beck and then Tom Brown kind of took it as his own. There was a movie made about it, uh, The Hunt. And so I, I believe it got a bad rap, right? A lot of people like either hate it or they love it, right? That's, that's the thing. I uh, wouldn't, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, I wouldn't normally uh, buy this knife. Mike at Bark River sent it to me. Um, he was probably tired of me uh, showing just pictures of the bolo. <laughs> I don't know. But no, um, so I wouldn't normally buy it, right? I kind of looked at it and went, wow, that would be kind of hard to sharpen. But now that I've got it and it's in my hands, I've been using it, I realized, no, it wouldn't be that hard to sharpen. Uh, this area you might need like a, a honing rod or something to get this little area right here. And I've got to say, this is the best production version of this knife I've seen because the top's version just is horrible. I don't like a saw. I mean, this is silly. Uh, but if you were to have a saw on a blade, in my opinion, it should be right here, not right here, right? And the top's, it has a saw right there, I know. But um, it's silly when, when the saw is right here. I, I just want to add that. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I'm really glad that this just has a 90 degree spine. It's super thick. <laughs> it's a beast of a knife. It is a jungle beast. At seven and a half inches, it weighs 22 ounces. That's, that's a heavy knife. Now, the controversy. Well, he, I, I guess Tom Brown might have taken uh, this design for his own. I'm not sure. I don't really care, like I said because I will never know the exact details of how it happened. Um, I could do all the research 
and all I could really do is is uh, form an opinion, and that's all it would be. Now, for the usefulness of this knife, it's grown on me. I've used it for the past week, built a couple fires, done all sorts of stuff with it, carved notches, chopped stuff. I like this knife. Now, to the downside of this knife. I think the only downside, of course, uh, besides like the weight and the thickness, I think it should be maybe a little bit thinner, maybe like a quarter inch, or maybe a little under a quarter inch. And this grind should be a little bit higher right here, so it chops better. That's the only gripe I have with this knife. Um, and that could be easily solved. For $15, you can send this knife in, or before you buy it, uh, you can have it uh, ground to where it, the grind is higher. And I believe that will chop better, just because it's just a thick blade. That's my only uh, uh, change I would do to this knife, besides the, maybe the thickness. But I like, I mean, it, it's a thick piece of steel, right? So, yeah, I enjoy this knife. Jungle Approved it is a beast. I think they're around $300, depending on the handle material you get. And I think it's worth it. American made with an awesome leather sheath. I think the leather sheath is probably at least worth 100 $150. If you were to get something like that made custom, you know, it's <laughs> I mean, these two combined and that A2 steel, big slab A2, I think it's actually a good deal. American made? I mean, geez. What, what else can you ask for? I mean, come on. Uh, super sharp, razor sharp, and it holds an edge forever. I'm trying to dull this knife, and the A2 is just, wow. I can still shave with it, and I'm really impressed. I'm super impressed with this knife. Uh, so this is my first impressions. I will do more videos of this knife um, in the coming months. The more I use it, the more I like it. That's just how this knife is growing on me. Like I said, the handle is not a problem. That was my biggest concern, was the handle. But it works perfect. So I hope you like this video. I hope you comment. I love all your comments. I love the interaction between YouTuber and viewer. And please hit that red subscribe button for further content. And make sure you hit the bell symbol to get notifications for when I upload a video. You can watch it and tell me what you think. And until next time, hello. Ah.